Make sure that we uh, we 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 pray together after the conference. Okay, I'll call you after, after the conference. Yeah, we need to do that. There what are number do I call you? Uh, you, you can you can call me on the three one six seven six five zero zero six zero or the three one six two four three two nine six seven. There are things that I want to call into your life. Thank you. And they must, they must happen. They must happen. Your stability, a new job. <clears throat> I'm looking for a husband for you. I'm, I'm serious. Very, very serious. And it must be a very rich husband and a child of God who come to treat you with honor and dignity and love your kids. That's what I mean. It's about time. Yeah, they have the love of Christ. Yeah. My goal is to help the kingdom of heaven. Good. And Maria, I don't laugh because I'm, I'm, because I'm calling the same thing into your life. You know that. Yours, yours is already mapped out. The, the road, the road map is already there, Maria. You know that. You know exactly what. You, you you are going to do and I told you that I'm behind you solidly. Yeah. All road leads to all roads leads to Iowa. You know that. <laughs> the town of M. Thank you, Jesus, for revelations. Let us pray. Blessed is your name. Oh God, who made everything, blessed is your power that you have released upon the earth today. Blessed is Jesus Montreal. Christ. Oh, good morning, Montreal. Good morning. Good. Is that G is that the Gillian? This is C. C, how are you? Good, and you? I'm good. What a blessed girl you are. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Let's let's try and talk uh, this morning. No problem. Yes, and um, I want to bless God and pray and just thank God for for the new outburst of open doors everywhere. Now Canada will not know what to do with you because you'll be everywhere, all over the place. Thank you, Jesus. Dearest Father, we bless you for your people. The greatest bond, the greatest stock market of yours, the greatest investment of yours is humans. We are the most mysterious creatures you've ever made. And that is why we know that the enemy doesn't like us. Because you made us. And you gave us everything and even more than what he ever dreamed of. When we walked away from you and we didn't negotiate with you, 
you still came back for us. Thank you, thank you, Jethroth. What a wonderful God you are. We thank you that Satan cannot steal from us. He cannot steal our joy, our wealth. The reason is that everything, the package that makes us who we are or who we are supposed to be is found in Christ. The anointed one, the Messiah. Brothers and sisters, let me explain something here for you to know, which is very deep. For you to be a leader that rules and a ruler that leads, you must be anointed with oil. The oil of heaven that comes from the Father. And that oil, there are times that that oil is a real physical oil. I'm, I'm just letting you know how this thing works. There are times that the, the anointing upon you becomes a real physical oil that flows out of you. There are times that the oil is a mixture of a red perfume mixed with oil and wine. God is the best. Excuse me. Let me find a tissue here. There we go. There is a time that something that was invisible then I do not want to have anything to do with it it's because it's a physical reality angels can appear to me physically this is not dream and in the supernatural realm there is no houses your house where you sleep is an open place it's an open space the walls the gates no matter what kind of iron they are made of is of no use when it comes to the supernatural. So I want you to begin to look, to really, really think seriously. Welcome, Rebecca. So even if you think that you are protected by living in a house, no matter what kind of house is it, a castle, a mansion, ordinary houses, a gated community, it's, it's like you are living in the field. Because spirits can enter any way at any time. Without what I'm saying, go and read the Acts of the Apostles. And you will see when they put Peter in prison and the church began to pray. That God, see, that is that's some of the thing I was talking about last night. Peter was put in prison. And the church began to pray. Prayer is the art of negotiation with God. And they said to God, we do not want you to keep silent. Like you kept silent when John the Baptist was in prison. See, when John the Baptist was in prison, God didn't act. I think because there was nobody that from the earth that told God, stop. That told God, stop, please, stop whatever you are doing. Get this guy out. God is looking for somebody from the earth to tell heaven what to do. 
I'm telling you. And it will come to pass. I don't know who, we, we are not told of anyone who prayed for John the Baptist, John the deepest, the announcer, the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth. And what happened? A young girl came to dance and the, and the, and the, and the, Herod asked, what do you, I think that was, I think that was who it was, yeah, something like that. He said, Herodias, yeah, Herodias. The daughter came to dance, something like that. I think, let me get this story straight. A young girl came to dance, and the king asked, what do you want, even half of my kingdom? He said, give me, excuse me, I'm coming. She went to her mom and said, what should I ask the king? The mom said, ask for the head of John the Baptist because he's the one that has been speaking out against my relationship with the king. He said, okay. Is that all you want me to say? Yes, ask for his head. Let his head be cut off so that he stopped talking. I remember John was in the prison long enough. And the Bible said even when Jesus was told that John was in prison, Jesus did nothing about it. But here, Peter was in prison and the church said, oh no, we're not going to allow that. Already some of the disciples have already been put to death. And twice we read in the Act of the Apostles how an angel brought some of the disciples who were put in these high security federal prisons. Angels always bring people out. And here the church began to pray until somebody from the earth complained to heaven. Nothing will happen. And as Peter was sleeping in the jail, in the prison, this is the federal prison, that there's no way you can get out. There are about like three big gates of iron before you can even make it out. The angel suddenly appeared in the cell. Why? Iron don't mean anything. Fans don't mean anything in the supernatural realm. An angel can go to any office and sit there and do what they have to do for you. I'm simply telling you how this thing works. And it is real. It's physical. An angel can take up, can, can, can begin to ask God for an angel that belongs to you. I call them made angels. They do made services. That angel will become like you. That angel can actually take your social security and your ID and out on the street, you, you, you will actually drive a car, a real car with a real registration number and will go to your bank if you want to go that way and will and. In fact, before he enters the bank, he will have your face, your body, and will speak exactly like you. There will be no difference between that angel and you. So this is not something that just happened that demons or fallen angels do. Our own camp does it better because those people stole that game from us. They, they emulate, let me put it this way, they emulate that game from our own area from the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. That's where they copied the little fake things they do. That's why when, when your parent dies, you see the demon that was employed to work in your family. You see that demon or the fallen angel that was following your family line appears in dreams or physically as your late father or as your late mother. And you begin to think, oh, this must be them. No, it's an entity from hell. They too can appear like real humans that you've known. 
Maria and I, we were talking the other day, and she and she she understands some of this reality. You see somebody having sex with you in a dream, or eating with you. You say, oh, it must be my mom or my dad, my brothers, my sister, people that you've known in your past, and you don't know you are eating with demons. Because it's very easy for spirit to change into anything they want anyway. And that angel can carry your ID, your social, and look and dress exactly in the kind of clothes that you, you put on. Exactly like the ones you have in your wardrobe, one of them. And goes to your bank and deposit a check for you. And it clears, those, those things clears like crazy. It clears quickly. And tell them this one goes to you. In fact, sometimes they stay there and pay off all your bills. And they put this in the seven. They say, don't touch these mediums. It should be in your savings. This 500,000 should be in your checking. And then they come back. And they follow you. I've seen angels make plane reservations. To begin to ask God for a maid angel, a nanny angel. You deserve one. Not just angels that come and go. You need an angel that stays with you permanently. I don't know why I'm venturing into this. I'm supposed to be. We are supposed to be meditating on John's gospel. But the spirit is leading me to begin to share with you some of this stuff. So sometimes, well, however the spirit of God leads me, I go with that. I go with the flow. You don't need angels that come and go. You need angels that stays with you permanently. That's what you need. The reason is because of our own, we cannot really do a whole lot. We need more of the presence of God. We need more of it. And, and angels help mediate the presence of Jesus. They help mediate. They, they help bring the glory here. As the seraphim releases the glory, we need angels to make it trickle down to us. And also as we grow in the presence of the Lord, <clears throat> we also begin to, God begins to do extra supernatural things with us. We enter into the angelic world. That's the world that I belong. That's the world that I crave to be all the time. It's the world of angels. This is one of the most beautiful, beautiful places to belong. It's the biggest club you can ever think of. It is the, the world, it is the atmosphere, the sphere, the territory of life and vision. Whereby you can actually be, for example, I can be in Alabama with Dana, talking with her, and ministering to her, and I could be in Nebraska, ministering physically. I'm talking of physical, I'm not talking of sleep pain, I'm not talking of out of body experience. I could be with Chantal in Montreal. You can, God can split you into different person into, into um, God can split you to be in different locations. That's why we have some of the, the what we call bi-location, whereby you are in two different places, but also you can be in many different places at the same time. Sometime, I think it was last year, I was ministering, it was in the night, and I was recording a teaching, and suddenly I discovered that uh, during that teaching, I was wearing a brown suit. Immediately, I saw myself in a black suit, a white suit, and another suit. And I was teaching in four different continents at the same time. And a lot of people report and ask me, were you in so and so place and so and so time? It started while I was in Africa. I started seeing those things. You must believe in those things for those things to begin to happen in you. You must begin to be familiar with them. 
what what happened to you waking up early in the morning and you go downstairs from your apartment and you and you see a car park with your name on it and you open it the door is not locked the door is open and the key is there and the title and paperwork having your name already on it is there what do you do are you gonna call the cops that's your car you were asking for it you got it a woman from uganda asked asked the lord she lived in england she asked the lord to give him money to run her orphanage for the lord and one day she woke up and there was a um, a brown paper bag right beside her bed her bed and she picked it up and opened it and it was the money she wanted it happened twice in her life let me read to you from john's gospel quickly can we still have enough time john Chapter 1, verse 38. Then Jesus turned and saw, and saw the two disciples following. And he said unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which means, Master, where dwellest thou? Where do you dwell? Okay, let me say this to you. The family that is God our Father, Jesus, our brother, our King and our God and the Holy Spirit, our everything. They always wait. They always watches to see what kind of move you're going to make. See, Jesus turned and saw them. There are many instances that God is not going to make a move on you until until you make the first move on him. Somebody's phone is echoing. God is watching to see whether you are going to make a move. God is watching to see whether you are going to turn for the most high things. Jesus saw them following him. God always knows when you decide with all your heart to follow him. He always knows this. And this is what I call the drama of God. When Jesus saw these two disciples following him, he asked them, what do you want? What are you looking for? You see, this is part of what I call the drama of God. The drama of God. Geneva, please write that down for me because I had a work that I've written down to do. This will remind me of this. Whenever you come in contact with the supernatural, whenever you come in contact with Jesus or with the Father, they will always ask you this question. Whenever you come in contact with angels from heaven, they will always want to engage you in a conversation. Why? Because what you say will determine.
determine where they are going with you. Not that Jesus did not know that they wanted to follow him. But he has to make sure that it's coming from their spirit. That the entire human process is involved in this. Not that God did not know that Cain had killed Abel. But he still came to ask Cain, where is Abel, your brother? Not that God did not know that Adam and Eve have eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But he still came saying, Adam, where are thou? He knew they were hiding. And then he asked them, have you eaten of the fruit that I say you should not? They always use a question to start a conversation. And that is the sign of an intelligent personality. Always ask a question in order to start a conversation. You never hear God condemning people easily. Instead, he, they always speak in a conversation manner. Even when, for example, the cousin of the fig tree, he did not say, I curse you, I rebuke you, I bind you fig tree. I demand that you die. Instead, he said, no one will eat fruit of thee anymore. It looks just as an ordinary sentence, but it was a sentence of death passed on that fig tree. If nobody is going to eat of fruit from that fig tree, it means the fig tree is useless. That was a curse. When God is speaking things that are heavy, he speaks in a way that you don't even know that there is a problem. I'm telling you. God speaks in a way that um, is sometimes like just bland. It's like bland. You don't feel nothing and yet there is something happening. And by the time you know it, it's already taking root. That's how, that's how the supernatural works. That's, how, that's why many a times you might think that God is still with you. You do not know he's already withdrawn. And what you are just having there is just a little bit. And by the time you know it is all fizzled out and gone. And that is why when God starts something mighty with you, protect it. When God shows you your husband, protect him. When God shows you your wife, protect him. When God gives you children, protect them. When God gives you money, protect them, invest them. God always want to find out whether you mean what you are saying. And whether you are saying what you mean. He always want to find out what is in your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And Jesus asked them, what are you looking for? He asked these two disciples. Why are you? It's like, why are you coming to me? What are you looking for? And they asked him and they said, Master. Immediately they recognized that he is boss. Have you recognized that Jesus is master? Master means my owner. My owner. And they asked him, where do you dwell? We are not just interested in following you. We want to find out where you, look, where you live. Because we, we want to go there with you. We want to be where you are. Now, the question here is, who is your master? What lifestyle is it? What lifestyle runs in you determines who your master is. The way you live your life will determine who your master is. I'm not talking of being extreme here. Some people want to pray and everything they do, they tie it up to God. They've not been even able to look at themselves and look at their natural way of life and see whether it is reasonable or making sense. I'm not talking of somebody being, being extreme. Because a lot of people need God to correct them. A lot of people need God to heal them. Master means owner. Ownership. 
That's why Bell, one of the greatest things that Bell always does is to claim ownership of families, of nations, of individuals, groups for Lucifer. Jesus is master because he made us. The first, the first face that Adam looked at, the first thing Adam saw when he became a living human was the face of Jesus. Tell anyone to dispute that with me and I will show them in the word of God. That the first face that a human saw was the face of Jesus. And that is why inside every human being born in this world is a little religion. If you accept Jesus as boss, he manifests. If you don't, he slowly fizzles out and exit if you don't want him. Master means ownership. Jesus owns us for God. Is he the one that really owns you? Are you sure? You see, when you talk of master, you are talking of like in the slave days. There were the mistress and the masters that lives in the huge mansions and the slaves. But this is not the kind that we are talking about here. We are simply talking about ownership. Have you allowed Jesus to be your owner? The one that owns you. That's what is going to make the entire difference in everything that you do. If he is boss, if he is your owner, it means whatever you want to do, you talk to him about it. And you hear what he says. And you ask him, what is the, what part do I need to play here? How do I make life easy for me? And if he owns you, he's going to give you everything. I'm telling you. He is going to give you everything. Everything. Anything and everything you ask him is going to be granted in this lifetime. We are not talking of when you go to heaven. That's the side of Jesus I'm interested in. It's him being my master, my owner. He owns me. Therefore, nobody, nobody will make a slave out of me. And nobody should make a slave out of you. Let us pray. Jesus, own your people. Advertise us to the world. Use us to advance the economy and government of heaven on the earth. Heaven is here. And we will follow the wind. Hallelujah. <laughs> we are sons and daughters of the wind. Of spirit. Thank God that witches are not in charge of the wind. We are. And Father, when we saw, when we fly with you, even our aura and vibration, thousands of miles, shoots anything that comes near us. Brothers and sisters, I'm simply telling you this. There's a place you reach with God that your aura, your spirit, your essence, who you are in Christ, send out signals like thousands of miles away, welcoming, welcoming angels from heaven and shooting at demons from hell. And fallen angels shooting at human spirits of darkness 
and negative and collect, collected or collective negative mindset. It shoot at them. They don't come near you. This is what we call the high places. Father, we thank you that this is the lifestyle that your people will live today. Thank you for giving your people abundance. I want real miracles today. I want war to cease in South Sudan. I don't care how it ceases, but I want it to cease. I command the stars that has been fighting unnecessary wars to go home. Every general that was sent against your people, right here in the United States, all those who follows my ministry, the office you've called me and anointed me. Every general of darkness and captain and major of darkness and colonels and small recruits who have followed their lives to make it miserable. I issue a statement, a decree, a pronouncement that let them go home and not come back to your people. Just as the demon spoke yesterday and said to me, I will never come back ever into the life of Tawana. So let it be in the life of your people. Anybody on the line or who will be watching this video who is possessed by demons, let those demons not keep silent. Let the power behind this video, the power behind this audio, the power behind this broadcast, you, Jesus, expose them because you are the light of the world. Expose them and let them back and leave your people and never return back. Thank you, Almighty Father. Yo shekayan bibia bukaran tumbi sekia mi kanam brunta kashaki de munderiente sakuyende brondu kuyanda brakatiente te koyu miende katum bronti sakiyende. Mandam brantu saku yaram bronde yekesha. I have divided the Red Sea for many of you. I am making you to walk on dry ground where water covered you. Your enemies that rose up against you are drowned. For those of you who could not see light but darkness, I have turned the light on for you. In the name of my son, I have decided to do a new thing, not just for your ministry, but I have decided to do a new thing for everyone who follows you, that they will know that I send you that they will know that I package you for this time in this world. That they will know that I've given you to assignment at the same time of ministering to people on the earth and people in heaven. A lot of my people need rest because their hearts are troubled because of what they've seen and the trouble they've gone through in life. But I have sent you to conquer their fears. For my son already conquered it. Your job is just to activate it and pronounce it. Every blessing for a lot of people who follow you are going through financial difficulty what year after year. And they are going from place to place to find solution. I will begin to use you in a way that you've never known in the area of finances because you've obeyed my word 
I did not send you to teach prosperity because it only lasts a person lifetime, but for you to seek out individuals and speak and pronounce them to become millionaires that in every family in the earth there will be millionaires so that my people will no longer suffer while the sons of darkness are enjoying. I will turn the entire thing upside down. For a long time the sons of darkness have been in charge of the money of this earth. But from now on, my own sons and daughters will be in charge. For a long time the sons and daughters of this of, of the earth have been in charge of governance, of leadership, of rulership. But from now on, my own children will be in charge. For many a times, the marriages of my people have broken. But from now on, anyone who consults you, who seek your advice before they go into marriage, I will make sure that their marriage will never break. I will make sure that their children never goes to jail. I will begin to perform supernatural miracles of weight loss through you. I will begin to do mighty things that nobody can stop. Stay on the line, okay? We are in prayer now, okay? Okay? I said, yes, I know, I know. I, I know, I know, Ruby. Stay on the line, stay on the line. There are many of my sons and daughters who do not know where to turn to. It's like the entire thing is confusing from one church to the other. I have started a new thing with you and it's going to go through the entire world. Many people start something and it comes to an end. But what I am starting with you that I formed you to do will never come to an end. It will continue from eternity to eternity. From now on, says the Lord, what I've decided to do through you will begin as I promised you two years ago that at this time, two years ahead, which is now, what I told you that I will begin to do, I will keep my word. I promise you that I will make you rich. I promise you that those who follow you will be made rich. I promise you that I will take you all over the earth. I promise you that I'm going to establish institutions and train leaders in the areas of business and investment, pastoral ministries, and those who are to govern and lead nations. I begin from today to perform my word. Those who turn away from you because they didn't understand how big or how things are going to turn, they will marvel at what I'm going to do. Because you've given your heart completely to me and you've followed me, I will bless you and bless those whom I've called to join you. Because I'm calling people from every nation and every cities of the earth to follow what you are doing. Because you've told the truth and you loved me and you cared about me. From this day forward, say the Spirit of the Lord, I will heal every sick person that comes to you. I will give direction supernaturally to everyone who comes to you. You have loved the nations of the earth. Because you want and you desire to see them do well. When you speak a word over nations, I will listen. When you remove a leader, I will remove them. When you appoint somebody, I will appoint them. 
thank you for talking to my people about how to negotiate with me because they do not know how to do it. There are so many things that a lot of people are not teaching, but I'm going to use you to teach joy because of the sufferings of my people. They have no joy. And I'm going to bring joy back to the earth because it's the most important thing that if you have it, you have everything. Bless your people and send them home on this peaceful Saturday because from this day forward, changes are going to happen. They will have changes in their finances. They will have changes in their health. Satan can no longer come in and out to disgrace them and to embarrass and harass them. Tell Doris that I heard her cry. Tell her that I heard her cry. And that I am not silent anymore. Brothers and sisters, let us begin to thank God for what is going on right now. Orphanages are going to be rising up. Nursing homes are going to be rising up for the sake of the Gospels. Universities, medical centers, cable networks, everything that you thought were coming from you were actually coming from me. And I am going to put them in place. I will bring to you the right people whom I have given the money and the knowledge and the technicality to help you. That's what I'm going to do. You shall not suffer to do what I have asked you to do. Allow me to do it because I will place the right people in your path and they will all come to you. I will set up the churches in every city and nations of the earth where the fullness of the gospel shall be heard and there will be manifestation of my presence and the demonstration of my power. From these days, say yet the Lord, stop thinking of yourself as a small ministry and begin to ask me for anything that you ever needed. Tell my people that whatever they need in life, let them call you. Then you call me. Train them. Train them, train them, train them on how to operate in the things of the Spirit so that they can talk to me of their own, so that my power will rest with them, so that they will be able to walk with you, says the Spirit of the Lord. Mm. Ah. People are coming to you from far and near because my light has been lighted in you. This is what I do. It is not by power and it is not by might. It is by my spirit, says the Lord. As the spirit began to move on Saul, as the spirit began to move on Peter and, and Paul and John, as the spirit began to move on Elijah and Elisha, on Moses, as the Spirit of God began to lead Abraham, so my spirit will begin to move as my spirit began to rule on David and on Samson. It will come upon you so heavy that you will not be able to control your very self. And when you stand out there, as the prophecy says, and you are ministering in large stadiums, remember that it is me who is doing the job. You are just a witness. And everyone who comes within a hundred miles where you are ministering shall, shall, shall experience my presence and healing will happen to people. Miracles shall be common in your days because you've asked for it. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, join me to pray this morning, wherever you are in the world. One more thing that I want to add to you. You will begin to heal people's mind. Even people who have been insane for many years, you will be healing them. I started your ministry 
by healing us an insane woman, I will continue that tradition. What the psychiatric units of hospitals cannot do, I will do through you. I will give women children, children who are coming to rule on the earth. I will establish businesses for those who follow you and those who love me. My love remains with you. Amen. Join me to begin to pray and to thank God. Thank you, Father, for manifesting your presence this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. service for for South Sudan this afternoon. Please, if you want to join, you can come and join us. And tomorrow morning, we will have the, um, we will have the 8 a.m. morning prayer and the 10, 10 a.m. Uh, Sunday service. It's all central time. Thank you. Bye-bye.